Palinford is still at it on the education forum. And he posted this graphic. It comes from the Darnell film. I have added the colored stuff here on this uh, on this frame of the film so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Circled in red is what appears to be one man. Circled in blue is what some people think is another person. And I think that is another person. There's a good argument against that being another person. But I'm not going to deal with that argument here. I think it's another person. And in green is an apparent object that is actually longer than it shows here because the head of the person in the foreground is covering up the end of that object. That object seems to be blowing in the wind in this graphic. And Alan Ford's interpretation of this uh, involves Lee Harvey Oswald being involved in a conspiracy which Oswald thinks the point of which is to attempt unsuccessfully to assassinate the president and that Oswald is thereby provided with an opportunity to put on a pro-Castro demonstration at the site of the attempted assassination by holding up a banner here and uh, I think that's a preposterous idea because I don't think Oswald was stupid enough to think that was a good idea. But that's Alan Ford's idea. I think something else is going on, of course. Previously, I had presented a, an explanation of this that I think is incorrect. I thought it was uh, the mailman coming to empty the mailbox, but I think I'm probably wrong about that. I think Alan Ford is really on to something here even though I disagree with his interpretation. And this is a longer clip of the Darnell film, which shows the motorcycle officer running towards the Texas School Book Depository, where the man is standing with that object that Alan Ford said is a pro-Castro banner. And circled in red is the motorcycle officer. So we've got this motorcycle policeman running towards the steps of the Texas School Book Depository where the mystery man with the object blowing in the wind is standing. And Alan Ford, and most people seem to think that this is Marion Baker, but if we look at this graphic, which illustrates what I have demonstrated in another video that I've already posted, this is not Marion Baker. The officer in red obviously is running from the area where the green circle is, and that green circle is around a police motorcycle. You can see it better later in the film, or later in, in the... There's another film you can see that, that motorcycle better than you can see it here because the car door is blocking part of it. But... Baker very specifically said where he parked his motorcycle when he talked to the Warren Commission. And he said he parked 10 feet east of the light pole, which I have circled in blue here. So this officer obviously started his run many feet south of that light pole, and Baker has not yet parked his motorcycle. And I have a, a video which... Uh, which uh, demonstrates that conclusively that this officer is not Marion Baker. And the name of that video, and you can search on my channel for it if you want to watch it, is the Darnell Films Running Motorcycle Officer is Not Marion Baker. So there is a motorcycle officer running towards the man by the mailbox there, but it is not Marion Baker. So Alan Ford could be right and not, and it wouldn't mean that Baker would have to be lying about why he went to the building. No, I think Marion Baker is an honest agent in this affair, and I think he told the truth about where he parked and about why he ran to the building. Now, this is a graphic which Alan Ford posted 
in order to demonstrate his belief, and I think he's correct, this officer is not running in order to enter the building, but he's running by the steps to where this person is standing by the mailbox. I don't think that can be determined with certainty, but I think it's probably correct that this officer is not running to enter the building. And it's easy for me to make that conclusion because it's not Marion Baker. Other people think it's Marion Baker and they have to make Marion Baker into a liar in order to believe that this officer is running past the steps because Baker said he ran to the steps and ran up the steps and ran into the building. Uh, so if, if you think that's Baker, you have to think that Baker was lying in order to believe Alan Ford's interpretation. But I know it's not Baker, so this makes uh, Ford's argument stronger that it's not Baker. Because Baker doesn't have to be a liar for it to be correct. I think Baker was on his motorcycle and saw this motorcycle officer running towards the building. And that's why he told this to the Warren Commission. That is right, sir. J.W. Williams, who was a motorcycle officer, was, I thought, over on the left hand side of me and he was right with me but as I ran in this building I found out that I was by myself I didn't know where anybody went I think it's clear that Baker thinks that this other officer was J.W. Williams and I don't want to get off into why he thinks that's who it is because I don't want to get off topic here but Baker is approaching where he's going to park his motorcycle 10 feet east of the light pole and he sees this officer running and he thinks this officer is running into the building but when Baker ran into the building that other officer was not there so I think this is what explains Baker's testimony too that that's not Baker running in the Darnell film that's the other officer he saw who thought had been riding who he thought had been riding on his left hand side and was ahead of him here running into the building and he expected that that officer was going to be in the building too when he got in the building but that officer did not run into the building so I think Alan Ford is right that this officer is running past the steps not to the steps as I have demonstrated in a prior video I did two years ago there are radio communications on the Dallas Police Channel 1 radio recording we have, which are not representative of normal police communications. And my conclusion is that these are communications of the assassins, that the conspirators were actually using Dallas Police Channel 1, and that's why we have that interference during the time of the assassination. That interference, as I explain, I think I explain it in this video, that interference was produced in order to, with the intent anyway, of preventing these communications from being recorded at the police station. And this could be done because the interference was created near one of the receivers for the police station, but it was far enough away from Dealey Plaza so that the intent would have been for the people in Dealey Plaza to be able to hear each other on their radios and for those communications not to be recorded at the police station. I'm not going to explain all of that here, but I need to uh, tell you this in order to explain what I think is going on in front of the Texas School Book Depository in the Darnell film. That is that uh, the conspirators were using radios, walkie-talkies, some of them anyway, using walkie-talkies. And the reason they did it this way probably was that some of the Dallas police were involved in this conspiracy. And therefore it would be easy to use the Dallas police radio channel because these police who were involved would have police radios on their vehicles and therefore wouldn't have to have any special equipment in order to communicate with their co-conspirators. But the conspirators in the Texas School Book Depository would need special equipment. They would need police radio walkie-talkies in order to communicate. 
And as I illustrated in another video, some items were thrown out of west windows of the Texas School Book Depository onto the loading roof, the loading dock roof, and were retrieved by Harry Weatherford, who was seen here climbing inside uh, uh, one of the windows on the second floor, one of the west windows on the second floor, and uh, circled in green are two items which I think probably are bags containing walkie-talkies. And on the left here is a graphic posted by Alan Ford, and he posted, or he included that red box on there, which is around an object in front of the mailbox. And uh, he thinks it's something. I don't think he said he th what he thought it was. And I have the other things on there, the green and the blue. And I think the blue boxed area from the Alan Ford graphic looks exactly like this other thing that's on the roof of the loading dock turned around the other way but still the same thing so I think that's a bag in which one of the walkie-talkies had been put and I think probably the the thing being held that Alan Ford thinks is a banner is actually another bag and th these were longer bags that were folded over uh, and one of the walk, I think probably two walkie talkies are thrown out the windows. And one of them was probably in the, one of them at least was probably in that long bag that had been folded up when we see it with Harry Weatherford when he's climbing in the window. And that perhaps even that red boxed area that Alan Ford noticed, perhaps that's a walkie talkie sitting there outside of its bag. Going back to these radio communications between the conspirators, two of them occurred after the shooting. And the first one says, the first of these two says, uh, here we come. And I take that to be somebody inside the Texas School Book Depository coming out with the walkie-talkies. And the next one we hear after that is Mary Jane, which I take to be the motorcycle officer indicating that he has successfully retrieved the walkie-talkies and presumably has put them into storage compartments on his motorcycle. So that's what's going on here. This unnamed motorcycle officer, and I have a name for him, I'll get to that, He's running to the Texas School Book Depository after he hears, here we come, and the, the people, the person or person standing by the mailbox, are there to give him the walkie-talkies that they have taken out of the building. So the guy at, by the mailbox or the two people by the mailbox are the ones who said, here we come. And when the motorcycle officer gets the walkie-talkies and gets back to his motorcycle and stows them away, he gets on the radio and says, Mary Jane, so that whoever is monitoring their communications will know that the task has been completed. And the running officer in the Darnell film is actually H.B. McLean. And the reason I say that is that Garland Slack told the FBI that Officer H.B. Randall found the witness that has to be Amos Ewens. And there is no Officer Randall, and there is only one Officer H.B., and that's H.B. McLean. And I think there's other reasons to think that H.B. McLean was a dishonest actor in this affair. And so I think that uh, McLean was one of the conspirators, and McLean is the officer running in the Darnell film. And the reason they had to hide that was because McLean was one of the conspirators. And so they want us to think that's Officer Baker running towards the Texas School Book Depository when it's really H.B. McLean, as I have demonstrated here and elsewhere. So what's really going on at the mailboxes is that somebody, maybe Lee Harvey Oswald, is is uh, supplying H.B. McLean with the walkie-talkies used inside the Texas School Book Depository. <laughs>